Boards are down, and here we go. Gold medal on the line here in the mixed team event. The first time it's been run at the Winter Games. And out in front in first place in that red bib is Moyoli Moyoli of Italy. very, very good. Jacob Ellis had some early struggles, mistiming in a few sections in the, in the, st in the start. Came up a little short on the, on the Wu-Tang. See if Odine can hold her off. She saw her have a really good race earlier in the wig, looking to repeat that. She's motivated, she's fast, she's strong. Keep it rolling. Here comes Jacob Ellis now. And not out of it is Carpano. No, Carpano she's... making a run too. Carpano, oh, Carpano taking Carpano. it right on the head. She hitting took Odine out. super hard. Now it's gonna be a battle for third. Who can get up and fast over? Jacob Ellis looking very solid for Oli. Wow. Odine went down. That was Carpano that knocked her down. And now here's the battle for gold. As we said, this was going to be set up to be a really good race. Moyoli looking very solid. She's got the position right now. Can she hold on? Lindsay Jacob Bellis, Peter! Look at Lindsay Jacob Bellis. She's got first place. What Can she hang on to it? Wow, what a pass there. A yeah, great move coming out of the rollers and taking the lead in that corner. Looking very solid. She's just got to drive it home for that second gold medal. Here's Jacob Bellis now over the kicker. Kicked out a little grab. Not a method, though. And Lindsay Jacob Bellis. Here's the mistake from Jacob Ellis. She came up short on one of those, and she really had the rally coming back. You see her knuckling, and there's, oh, maybe she didn't get landed on, but she definitely sure appeared that way if she fell over in the landing. I don't know, I missed that, I missed that. I have to get another look at it. But everybody got up on their feet, so it was amazing to see, and then the battle was for first place. So apparently it's official now, and Canada will take home that bronze medal, and there's Jacob Ellis. That move right there cost her the gold medal. Powerful starts from Jane. This is what we've come to expect. 5.07, beautiful start. Puts that three to four tenths in the bank for her. But as you said, she struggled every single run. The track has just reached out and grabbed away that speed from Jane. So in this fourth and final heat, She'll be looking to just calm her mind and see how well she really can slide this track. This has been a tough season for, for Jane and for Mimi Raniva, who's still to come. Uh, the Canadians uh, dealing with COVID for the second year and and for all intents and purposes, not having any coaches on the World Cup this year. Yeah, when they were here in October, they really didn't have any support. So all of their steer plans and everything have been made by themselves. So that's a, a very tall order for such a long winding track. 117 kilometers per hour for this section. Exit 13, little bump. Not, not too bad though as Jane Channel chasing Laura Dees oh. and she'll take the lead by six tenths. Laura Dees, there's a story. She was a bronze medalist in Pyeongchang. The Brits have won a medal in every skeleton competition since its inception in 2002, but not this time. They just barely made the cut. Jane Channel takes the lead in the early going from Laura Dees of Great Britain. Day nine of the Olympic Games. Can you believe that we are over halfway done? You just saw Jane Channel's final heat. Of course, two-time Olympian Jane Channel. She's going to be joining us in just a moment's time. We're also going to be chatting with Elena Gaskell, freestyle skier. Unfortunately, Elena crashed out in training a few days ago and... Um, it's been a really trying time. She did her ACL, uh, huge bone bruise on her femur. So unfortunate uh, Olympic debut for Gaskell, but she will be joining us in just a few moment, moments time. I would love to join or it, it, welcome, excuse me. That's the word I was looking for. Welcome, Jane. Jane, thanks so much for joining us. It's great to see your face. Um, you, you competed about 16 hours ago. How are you feeling today? I cannot hear you. I'm sorry, my friend. We're, on, we're living in a Zoom sorry, world. Sorry, here we go. That's okay. You know what? We've here only we been in the pandemic for two years. I do the same thing. I'm sorry. Let's start again. How, how are you feeling? It's great to see your face. Thank you. Thanks for having me here. Um, I'm doing okay. I'm still processing what, what all of this is. It only really kind of hit um, my teammates and I last night after a race that we were at the Olympics. And so it's been a, 
it's been a bit of a weird, like you said, um, we raced 16 hours ago, so it's been a bit of a weird uh, 12 hours really since then. But um, yeah, we're we're all excited to have been able to have this opportunity in this crazy year to be able to compete for Canada here. What's What's been the weirdest part of it, if you don't mind me asking? I think for for me, just having a, had been to Pyeongchang, I think the the lack of the crowd um, was mm. the biggest change. Like at the start in Pyeongchang, it was so loud you couldn't even hear. Like when the green light goes on for when it's your turn to go. Um, when we were in Pyeongchang, you couldn't even hear it because of just the, the noise. But here, it was just the not that it was crickets because we had some some of our our teammates and everything come out but it was it was just a different different vibe if people haven't been able to of course see their families as well so i'm you know i know team canada is your family what support have you been getting from your teammates we we've, we've had to come together there's only three of us this time um mimi and and blake and so we've really really had to band together um and we're, we're fortunate this this time, this trip, we had um, our good support staff. We had a coach, assistant coach, a therapist, and a managerial um, person. And so it was, it's been great to have that kind of camaraderie. We, we definitely miss that during the season. You are a little bit of a 2010 legacy baby. Um, you watched John Montgomery compete and, of course, win gold. Uh, that inspired you. I would love to just kind of touch upon, you know, your career up until this this point. But first, can we quickly run a, a clip of John Montgomery's winning run? John's been in the low 60s. He did a 465 on in heat number three. Incredibly fast starts, but they need to be to compete with Dukers. John Montgomery is on his way. His final run in men's skeleton, a 461. He saves his best for heat four. Fastest start time for Montgomery comes in his final run. He said he was going to throw down and he had to, and that's what he's doing. You see his lead on Trechikov. He had a big lead on Trechikov coming into this final run, but this is not who he's racing. So far, perfect. Montgomery trying to build up the lead. A half Beautiful straightaway. Half second advantage on Trechikov. He's John's having another one. He's got to get the speed here. 131-1. Through the Gold Rush Trail in the Thunderbird. 144A for John Montgomery. His time will be 52-36. 52-36 for John Montgomery. He is the leader, but is it enough with Dukers yet to come? Incredible run for John. At least a silver medal for John Montgomery. He's done what he came here to do. Four incredible runs. The rest is up to Dukers. How important is that legacy to you and how do you embody it? I, I think more than ever, being able to say that I am from the Whistler track is, is more important right now just because it is the only working functioning track we have in Canada right now. Um, they've dismantled the Calgary one, which has really hit hard our development programs that we've had. So um, it's, it's made it extremely difficult to continue to keep the programs up and running. And so um, to be able to have those, those facilities there still working has been a huge, huge increase um, to, to build what kind of little we have <laughs> and to try and keep it going. I can only imagine how many people are watching you thinking, how do I get my kid into this sport? Like, uh, this is your, your elevator pitch. How can, how can kids take up the sport of skeleton? Because it's just such a beautiful sport. Honestly, anybody and everybody can come out and try it to see if they like it. There are tourist starts. There's 16 corners in Whistler. You enter corner 11. You can get up to and over 100 kilometers an hour. My dad, my sister, my brother, I'm trying to get my mom to go give it a shot. Um, there's local camps through the Whistler Siding Center. There's sniper camps. Um, there's some running actually right now and up through till March. So if anyone is interested and in the Whistler area, I encourage you to come out um, and give it a go. It should be on everybody's bucket list. 
You've won multiple World Cup medals. You've won a Crystal Globe for the overall uh, World Cup. What are you most proud of, my friend? Oh, that's a hard one. <laughs> You're gonna make me cry for this one. <laughs> um, I think I'm most proud of being able to represent Canada, um, to wear the maple leaf. I can't even put that into words and to be able to have the village and this literally it took a city to get me here <laughs> this time. So thank you everybody um, who helped with that, but as well to be able to inspire if just one person, if that to be able to pursue their dreams and to dream bigger and challenge themselves to dream even bigger is I think my biggest takeaway. You have an amazing helmet and your helmet is kind of an ode to previous helmets and, and previous stories. Can you show it? Do you have it for us? And, and what stories I do, do those, I have it. those tell? Yeah. Yeah. So what? this is my helmet here. Um, obviously the maple leaf on it cause, um, cause Canada, <laughs> um, on the left side, I've got, it's a Phoenix and um, when I was cut from the 2019 World Championships team in Whistler, I really had to stop and reevaluate, and it truly felt like I was having to rise from the ashes. On the, the right side, I've got a dragon. Um, it is quite fitting for <laughs> the China Olympics here because of the, <laughs> yeah. the track and everything. But um, I'm half Japanese, and so I really, on my very first time, I wanted to portray that aspect of things. And so he's making another appearance. They both have glowing wow. chests, like my um, my helmet from the 2018 Pyeongchang Olympics that had the, the glowing heart. Um, and on the back, there's two race stripes and um, some wow. the dates, the years of the Olympics. Um, I was in some footprints and of course, the broom, the infamous broom from <laughs> when that happened. <laughs> um, as well on the nose, I've got some golden wings and the number seven hiding under some tape here so, yeah. wow that is a uh, that is so 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 beautiful what i i love it i mean you've been so candid and you've said sometimes people say it takes a village but you have had a city around you um who are some of the people that have made this all possible for you and what would you like to say to them i think first and foremost my my family um, <laughs> they've been my, my rock, um, throughout this entire, entire journey. Um, thank you so much for all of the love and support. Um, I could not have been here without you. Um, as well, it, it stretches out to strength and conditioning coach Kornsekulich, our thank you for all your help as well. Um, but the various coaches, the private coaches that I've had to hire, um, outside of, uh, anything that um, unfortunately our federation wasn't able to afford and so thank you guys as well and my sports psych Matt Brown um, physios from across Canada um, the sponsors that I have as well um, and just the I'm, I'm part of I'm a classroom champions mentor and to be quite honest the I'm a mentor for them but they're always there encouraging me regardless of the ups and downs so They've been truly incredible to, to have as well. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's no, been... you know what? I'm crying through Zoom. So <laughs> that's pretty hard to do. <laughs> Keep going. Thank you. No, it's, and honestly, all the kind messages from people across Canada. Um, being out here without the spectators is one thing, but to be able to have you guys send those messages we see them, we read them, we hear them, and we feel them. So thank you all, Canada, everybody, for your kindness and your support. Um, we've all been incredible, and you are all a part of this journey. So thank you. Thank you for dropping by the spotlight space. <laughs> Jane, oh <my> <laughs> thank you for having me. <laughs> what a way to start our day, just a cry fest. Oh, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for your candor and um, thank you just for representing Canada. Really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you, Jane. Whew. Thanks, Jane. 
We are going to catch up with Elena Gaskell in just a few moments' time. Of course, I mentioned um, she did crash out in a training uh, training program a few days ago, so she's had a very bumpy ride here in Beijing, but she's got a lot to be proud of as well. This is her story up until this point. RBC Olympian Elena Gaskell grew up challenging anyone she could find on the hill. Throw in sibling rivalry, and you have the makings of a world-class athlete. I'm a pretty competitive person, so I never wanted my older brother to be better than I was. I kind of had the mindset, anything he could do, I could do better. That's good. He kind of just pushed me to progress at such a young age to want to be better than him and want to do these big things and just not have fear. Turns out that friendly competition was a big motivator. In the 2018-19 season, I won the Big Air Crystal Globe. I don't think I could wipe the smile off my face. And now, as Gasco gets ready to send it at her first Olympic Games, she knows her brother Josiah is part of the reason that she's there. I don't want to speak for my brother, but if I was going to, I would say that he would be very proud of me and he would be snarky and be like, well, I did this trick before her, or I used to be better than this Olympian when I was a kid. Nicely done, give it up for Elena Gaskell! I think now, I like to think that I'm better than him, so whenever we go out and just do some all mountain runs, it kind of pushes me to go a little faster and try a bigger clip and do things I might not when I'm just on my own. All kidding aside, Gaskell knows her brother is one of her biggest fans. I could not be more excited to be living my dream and going to the Olympics and having such a supportive family for what I'm doing and want me to do my best in every way. We're very lucky to be joined by RBC Olympian Elena Gaskell. Elena, thank you so much for doing this. I know you got injured uh, about three, four days ago. Um, I can't imagine that it has been a difficult, I can't imagine that it's been an easy time, excuse me. How are you doing? How are you doing? Hi, Anastasia. Thank you for having me. Um, honestly, not great. Obviously, it's definitely heartbreaking. Um, coming all the way out here, training, like, I don't know, it just feels unreal, kind of like a nightmare. But every day I'm slowly getting a little bit better, for sure. So that's good. Crying a little less, working on rehabbing my knee, so it's starting to feel a little bit better as well. But yeah, it's still great to be here, and I get to cheer on my teammates for the next event, so I'm looking forward to that. Crying is okay. Um... You've mentioned your teammates a few times. Uh, I would love to know just how they've tried to help you uh, help you out in this time. Super lucky to have such a tight, close knit team. Um, the two girls and the two other girls and I are all very close, and they've just been hanging out with me lots. They got me a little like get well basket after I got hurt. They had like a heart pin and a couple of my favorite snacks. They're just very sweet and caring and there for me, which is great. We all try and support each other as much as we can, which is important. So I'm very lucky to have them. I know you're very close with your brother, Josiah. Um, ha have you chatted with him? I'd love to know what your, uh, what your family has said to you. Yeah, no, I've chatted with my whole family. Um, I've talked to my brother a bit, but he is in a bit of exam season right now at school, so we've only been able to talk so much, but every day he's actually been very sweet by reaching out to me and like wishing me well and like hoping that I have a good day. And same with my parents every day send me a quote um, in the morning, so I wake up to kind of like a motivational, inspirational quote. So it's like their little piece to try and like when I wake up feel better, I guess which is very sweet, and if I'm going to be completely honest, I haven't, it's probably been me that has talked a little less. I get pretty emotional when I start talking too much about it. It just gets me really sad. So I've been very brief when talking to, honestly, almost everyone. <laughs> Thank you again for doing this interview. Um, I know it can be difficult to do media, so uh, again, I just really appreciate you being so vulnerable. Um, you haven't gotten to compete. Uh, what have you learned through this experience? 
Um, I guess I wouldn't learn the normal Olympic game experiences just because I didn't get to compete. I'm definitely trying to learn how to be stronger and battle through this. I will learn a lot of things coming up in the next multiple months with rehabbing and about myself and when I won't be skiing. Um, here, I've learned how to try and be a more supportive teammate the best that I can and still go out there and cheer for my team when I'm not able to compete, which sounds a lot easier than it is because it makes me very sad to be there. Um, and then just this whole experience I'm also grateful for as well. Like I am at the Olympics, which is so amazing and I'm getting to meet people in other sports and I'm getting to be in this atmosphere and experience like the Olympic Village, which is awesome, so. You're only 20 years old. Uh, you have so many good years ahead of you. Um, does this fuel a fire for, for, for Italy? Yeah, um, definitely. When I think about it, I definitely already now want to come back even stronger which still feels so far away, honestly, at this point. And I think it will feel more of a fire as more time passes and it gets closer to when I can be back on snow. But I definitely want to come back, be stronger. I am going to be motivated and hopefully be able to ski to my best. I mean, that is, I had a other knee injury earlier in November 2020 and didn't ski the whole season, like the 2021 season. And then uh, last season I keyed in my first event back, I podiumed. So it was just like having that whole year off and just like coming back and wanting it so much. And the like, I still competed like the best I'd ever competed. So hopefully like after this injury as well, I'll be able to come back and be stronger than I ever was before. I hope, I think <laughs> that's what I hope for. You will be. I have uh, every confidence in that. What are you most proud of um, in this entire situation? Um, I haven't thought about that, honestly. I am proud that I made it here, for sure. Like, I guess in my head, I keep thinking, like, people are like, oh, you're still Olympian, you made it there, but still, like, deep down, it doesn't, Feel like it as much with not being able to compete and not being able to do what I came here to do but I want to still say that I am I worked so hard to get here and came through so much so I want to be proud that I still made it here and still can say that I am Olympian and I did all the work to get here I just unfortunately wasn't able to compete because of my injury Canadians, I can promise you are incredibly proud of you. Again, thank you so much for taking the time to do this interview. It can be so difficult to talk to the media. So I just really appreciate you, Elena, and um, can't wait to see you do big, big things in the future, my friend. Thank you for having me, Anastasia. Nice to talk. Thank you. Big air skiing, it's lovely. It's nice and sunny, about zero degrees. Let's go watch some sports. On TV, you think, oh, they're professionals, and then you see it in real life, and you realize just how dangerous this sport actually is. I promise you on TV, you cannot tell how steep that actually is. What's coming up next? Bobsleigh, Mono Bob, of course, historic debut. Look for Cynthia Appia competing in Mono Bob. 
Whoo, that run number two is up in about half an hour. They're actually competing right now. So tune into CBC to watch Cynthia Appiah, RBC Olympian. It has been an emotional, emotional episode. So uh, why don't we leave you with a duck running a marathon? This has been day nine, <laughs> RBC Spotlight. See you tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern on all CBC digital platforms. Yeah.